Hi, this is Professor Cummings. I wanted to do a, a video today on compound interest. I was listening to Dave Ramsey, uh, a video on, of Dave Ramsey on YouTube, and he was had a caller where he was actually talking about uh, the power of compound interest and gave the person an example of actually gaining how much money they would have if they took a small, relatively small investment, initial investment, invested that into a mutual fund and actually allowed it to grow over a long period of time. And the number was pretty impressive, you know, considering that they started with a relatively small amount. So I thought this would make a really neat uh, video for you guys to listen to because it showed the power of differential equations as well as compound interest. And it follows in along with uh, the exponential growth and decay uh, differential equations that we've gone over. So let's just give a definition to this. It's called continuous compound interest. The definition, interest on a principal is compounded in infinitesimally small compounding periods instead of days, months, quarters, etc. You know, an application of this would be looking at investments, stocks, mutual funds. The key word here is this phrase here, this infinitesimally small compounding periods. So what that's saying is instead of looking at you know a period of a, even a day, you're looking at uh, periods that are so small for it to compound that you're just considering that interest constantly or continuously uh, rolling over. Now, again, looking at this, putting it into differential equations, here's a way to say what's going on, and we're going to turn this into a differential equation. So the growth of the principle with respect to time is proportional to the initial principle. So what is that saying? How, so the growth, the growth of the principle with respect to time. So right there, we know we have a differential. We're looking at something with uh, uh, growing with respect to time. So we're looking at a, a rate of change. And we know that it's also proportional to the initial principle. So we've got a constant of proportionality right here. So this is another major clue and it's proportional to the initial principle. So whatever we start out with, it's got something going on here that's keeping it proportional to this rate of change. So right there you can uh, come up with some differential equation. So the growth of the pencil, growth of the principle with respect to time, year, principle with respect to time, is proportional. That's what this little symbol here means: is uh, proportionality to the initial principle. Or we can change it a little bit, uh, turn it into an actual equation, and you have the rate of change of the principle with respect to time is equal to r times the principle. So R is our constant of proportionality. And also R can be looked as uh, the interest rate. You know, so this is the actually the interest rate. Oh boy. Okay, so that's the interest rate. So R is the interest rate. And right here, we have actually come up with our differential equation. So that's our differential equation. So we can look at this differential equation and we can solve it. So first, you can look at this, it's actually a separable differential equation. You know, so you can see it fits the standard form of a, a separable differential equation with this constant proportionality. So how do we actually solve this? Well, we have to separate the variables. So we're going to have to divide both sides by P and multiply so, uh, both sides by the differential of DT. And we end up with an equation like this, dp over p is equal to r times dt. Now, now in solving this, all we do is just integrate both sides of the equation. And the integral of dp over p is a natural log of the absolute value of p. And since r is going to be treated as a constant, r is a constant, that just comes right outside the infinite sum symbol and it's multiplied by t, the differential of t, plus the constant of integration. Now one thing to take note of on this one is p, this principle, is actually never going to be below zero. So you know they can't invest a negative amount of money. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take both sides and we're going to get rid of this natural log. So that means we're going to take both sides and put it to a base E. So this will cancel. And what you'll end up with is this equation here. Like I said, the principle is never going to be negative. So we can actually drop the absolute value symbol, absolute value bars. And, but on the left, right side of the equation, we have E raised to this entire quantity of the rate or our interest rate or our constant proportionality times the time plus C. And we got that uh, constant of integration that we have to still consider. So here we have, we dropped the absolute value bars, so we guess FP is equal to E raised to the RT. And now with the rules of logarithms, we can say, okay, this is going to be multiplied by E raised to the C. Since we're adding a C, we just take it, use the same base, uh, E raised to the C. And since E raised to the C is a constant, we can just go ahead and note that as a constant. You know, note that, that that's actually going to be a constant in its own right. So we end up with this equation here. So we got P, the principal, is equal to C times E raised to the RT. So now what we have to do is we have to solve for actual cost of integration. Now, when you do your investment, you actually can say it to time zero, that, you know, time zero, then that's when your investment actually starts. So when you take that at uh, time zero, plug zero in for your time, this all reduces to one, or goes to one. So you end up with C is equal to whatever the initial principle was, your initial investment. So substitute that back in, your initial investment in for C, and you end up with this formula here. Now this is oftentimes called the PERT formula, but this is the formula for continuous compounding. And when you hear people say, you know, the power of compound interest, how much money you're going to gain if you allow yourself to just hold on to your investment, you know, that initial investment, this is the formula that they're referring to. Now this is, again, just looking at an initial investment. This isn't doing routine uh, installments or routine investments into a uh, and, and into your principal or into your account. So this is just saying you take one initial investment, put it in at an interest rate, and over a certain amount of time you should be able to calculate whatever your interest or whatever your new principal is at any point in time, which is what P would be. This also works if you're going to consider, say, a loan. You know, if you consider you're going to actually have to pay back a loan and you want to know, and they give you an interest rate, you want to know exactly how much you're paying back at the end of that loan. So let's look at an example here. So we have a couple that a baby is born and the couple, the parents actually make an initial investment of $1,000. Okay, so keep that in mind. They're making an initial investment of $1,000. Okay, into a mutual fund and it's going to earn 9% interest, interest over 30 years. Okay, how much money will that baby make when he turns 30 years old? Okay, so we're gonna, basically the whole the baby's whole life, he's going to have this $1,000 sitting there just gaining nothing but interest. So we can go back to our formula. We solved our differential equation. We have our formula, the, you know, the PERT formula. So we got our initial investment, which is going to be $1,000. We got an interest rate of 9%. We got a time amount of 30 years, and we want to know what this final principle is going to be. So we can just go ahead and our final, uh, yeah, final principle is going to be. So we go ahead and plug it in. So the principle at 30 years, P of 30, is equal to $1,000 times E raised to the RT, which is 0 0.09 times 30. And it works out to $14,879.73. So just under $15,000. We can put that into an Excel spreadsheet and actually chart it out from the time the baby was born. You know, an initial investment of $1,000 actually does grow out in exponentially 
to that almost fifteen thousand dollars it's not a bad birthday present and this is professor cummings and thanks for watching